This is another classical microscopic examination of how the granular cast look like. And this is another example of a granular debris. Now, if the patient is having uh, a chronic tubular pathology, that is said tubular interstitial disease, the tubules typically become dilated because of the pathology. If such a guy happens to produce scars, how do they basically look like? Broad waxy cars are very classical of dilated tubules in a patient of a chronic kidney disease is what you have to ultimately remember. So ultimately we use a term called telescoped urinary sediment. What is the meaning of it? When the complete urine examination says patient is having red cells, white cells, oval fat bodies, all this mixed in the urine sample, you call it as a telescoped urine, urinary sediment. If a patient has got telescoped urinary sediment, what are the important things that you need to evaluate? If, if she is a patient of SLE, look for lupus nephritis. If there is a telescoped urinary sediment, malignant hypertension, diabetic glomerulosclerosis, and a rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, these are all the things that need to be suspected whenever the patient is having telescoped urinary sediment is what I want to underscore to all of you. Now coming to the post renal causes of the acute renal failure, most important thing that you need to clinically examine is the bladder. Most of the times we ignore this basic clinical examination in a patient of ARF. For example, you have an elderly patient, 75, 80 year old, severe urea creatinine elevation is there, acutely. If you forgot to check his bladder, then you are missing a very important clue about his underlying BPH. This reason, palpate the bladder, do ultrasound and identify hydronephrosis, pass a catheter and see whether urine can come out. And uh, placing a catheter is a very important part of the evaluation in a patient of ARF who is having post renal causes, or obstructive causes responsible for the ARF is what need to be remembered. Now, in a case of ARF, what are the important investigations you want to plan for? Electrolytes are very important. Potassium, calcium, phosphate, albumin, CBP, etc. And if there is proteinuria, it is an important clue to say that there is an intrinsic renal pathology. So look for the proteinuria in a patient of acute renal failure. Then always get a urinary sediment, complete urine examination, which is called poor man's renal biopsy. In that, if hyaline casts are there, then it is more benign pathology. RBC cause glomerular disease. WBC cause means parenchymal inflammation. Fatty cause means there is nephrotic syndrome. So they are all the important clues. Then always get the blood chemistry in a case of ARF where fractional excretion of sodium. How do you calculate FEA and NA value, doctor? Fractional excretion of sodium. Less than how much is prerenal? Less than? 1% is pre-renal, more than 1% is intrinsic renal failure. So, calculate sodium value in the urine, calculate the plasma value, sodium's value in the plasma, creatinine in urine and plasma, creatinine, creatinine in the plasma. What is the normal plasma sodium, doctor, generally? 130 to 140 is the normal, uh, 130 to 135 is the normal plasma sodium. And uh, what is the normal plasma creatinine? Generally less than 1. So when you do this calculation into 100, if it is less than 1%, it is an important clue to say it is pre-renal failure. So once more to give you a review, pre-renal, intra-renal, ATN and uh, Within intrarenal, you have ATN or glomerular pathology. If you look at the sediment, hyaline casts are an important clue of 
prerenal. Muddy brown cars are typical of tubular necrosis. Dysmorphic RBC cars or fatty cars are typical of glomerulonephritis is what need to be remembered. You don't have proteinuria if it is prerenal. But if it is 4 plus, then it is suggestive of glomerulonephritis is what I want to underscore to all of you. Then similarly, if it is interstitial nephritis, you will find WBC cars. And sometimes isnophiluria is an important clue of interstitial nephritis. Why? Because interstitial nephritis is commonly due to drug reactions. Drug reactions are associated with isnophilia. So, isnophiluria is an important clue to say that this patient is suffering from acute interstitial nephritis. Then if it is post-renal, then uh, you may or may not see the RBCs and WBCs is what need to be remembered. Now a very important parameter which is evaluated in a patient of renal failure is the renal failure index. How do you calculate? Urinary sodium by urinary creatinine by plasma creatinine into 100 as what we said, fractional excretion of sodium is a very important clue. And always get a urinary culture done so that that gives you an important clue whether there is any infectious etiology leading to the development of this uh, acute renal failure. And in the renal ultrasound, look for any hydronephrosis, hydroureter, etc., etc. And this is how if you do CD scan, you are able to see this side kidney is showing a significant amount of hydronephrosis which gives a clue in a patient of ARF that there is a post renal obstructive pathology is what I want to underscore to all of you. Now comes a very important uh, question. Do you want to do a renal biopsy in a case of ARF? Do you want to do a renal biopsy? Suppose you have a patient of systemic lupus erythromatosis. A SLE patient develops a acute deterioration of the renal function and goes into azotemia and you are suspecting lupus nephritis and you want to plan for immunosuppression in her, right? That becomes an indication for doing renal biopsy. Somebody had malaria. Because of that, there is an acute renal failure. Do you want to do renal biopsy? No, you don't want to do. Somebody has hypovolemia, dehydration, shock, clear cut telltale signs of the possible underlying cause of the renal failure. Do you want to do renal biopsy? No. So you must know what are the indications of renal biopsy in a case of the ARF. Conditions like lupus nephritis, Acute glomerulonephritis, if you have a clue, it is a glomerulonephritis. How do you recognize? What is meant by nephritic picture? Hematuria, hypertension with renal failure combination gives you a picture of nephritic picture. There you need to do, or if you are suspecting any allergic interstitial nephritis, also it becomes an indication for renal biopsy, is what need to be remembered. When do you want to do renal arteriography is my question to all of you. Suppose if you are suspecting renal artery stenosis as the underlying possible cause for the development of an ARF, then that becomes an indication for doing, as you can see, these are the stenotic renal vessels originating from aorta. Renal vessels are the branches of the aorta, right? Now, a very common diagnostic and therapeutic algorithm which are expected to draft in the tomorrow's exam is how do you approach clinically a patient of ARF there is ARF always rule out the post renal causes how will you rule out history physical examination Foley catheter do a renal ultrasound they are the important clues then you do the urine analysis if it is a hyaline cause, consider prenatal failure. If it is muddy brown cause, consider ATN. If it is RBC cause, consider glomerular disease. If it is WBC cause, consider pyelonephritis or acute interstitial nephritis. If it is isnophiluria. 
then if it is prerenal always get a blood urea nitrogen fractional excretion of sodium and urinary osmolarity if at all the blood urea nitrogen by creatinine ratio less than 20 fractional excretion of sodium more than 2 percent urine osmolality is low that means there is a salt losing water losing intrinsic cause of a renal failure is what you will basically conclude if you put this diagnostic algorithm examiner is happy this guy has read the entire chapter of ARF in one shot so what are the important complications of acute renal failure you are the house surgeon in the midst of the battlefield of casualty you have a patient paraded to you a poor farmer from the village who had malaria or sepsis with an acute renal failure how are you going to manage him number one once there is an acute renal shutdown the ability of the kidney to drain the water out of the body is gone hence there is a fluid retention and because of that the ECF volume expansion will be there and he will be going into pulmonary edema if there is pulmonary edema give him fruzumite normally what is the dosage of fruzumite that you give less 6 20 mg 40 mg they are all non ambitious doses in a patient of pulmonary edema you should give 80 mg 120 160 mg if you give 20 mg 40 mg kidney will be laughing ah this uh, physician prescribing physician has never studied medicine properly why because if you give such a low dose it need to reach kidney first and it need to reach the tubular side and there it need to act in in the ascending limb of loop of Henle to get the fluid drained into the urine so if you give 20 40 mg in a patient of acute pulmonary edema it is significant under dosing that's the reason 80 mg 120 mg intravenously dramatically you must act if there is pulmonary edema is what need to be remembered in spite of giving a loop diuretic if there is no improvement in the patient then that becomes an indication for dialysis is what you need to remember